welcome to Passion. I'm your host, Britt Ivey, and today we have with us musical guests, Gail Wilson and her husband, George Rubeloff. Welcome, you two. Thanks, oh. Britt. It's great to be here. I haven't been yeah. on the show in a long time. It's good to see you. Well, Thank you, Thank you Britt. Thanks for having us, too. Yeah. Appreciate it very much. My pleasure. I'm very excited for this little talk show here so we can just kick back and visit about what you've been doing. <coughs> Um, Gail, you've been around, both of you have been around for decades in the Valley, so we're here to talk about your passion for music, and maybe at some point in the show I might slip in a little bit of the passion you have for each other. I <laughs> kind of have the inside scoop on, on how you met and your love story. Um, but let's start out by talking a little bit about what you're currently doing. Um, at Camelot Theater, I know you had a, a year off or so. Tell, why don't you share with the audience oh, where you've sure. been? We're so well, used to I've seeing been... you everywhere, from Channel Ten news anchor woman years ago <laughs> to you know TV person. Channel Five, person. Channel Lord, five. Whoops, Lord. Lord. whoops. You were it's at okay. Ten. I was at Five. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, I uh, I had back surgery actually. Oh. I had two back surgeries mm -hmm. and. They really it took it out of me for about a year. It was a long recovery, but I'm back now and feel really good. And I'm rehearsing right now on a, a spotlight for Camelot Theater. Congratulations. And, um, it's a Carol King spotlight. And mm -hmm. I think it's the 11th show that I've done there mm -hmm. for spotlights. Mm -hmm. So I've covered a lot of ground. Rosemary Clooney and the Andrews Sisters and um, Patty Page. Doris Day, Karen Carpenter, I saw Karen Carpenter. <laughs> Dusty Petula, uh, Dusty Springfield and Petula Clark, mm -hmm. and um, a big, uh, big uh, girl singers of the big band era, and then that. Blue Divas. Did you see Blue Divas? No, I, I didn't. did that with Jade Watt. Oh, that was, oh, fun. Jade's that was fantastic. That was blues from the 20s and 30s. Ma Rainey, Bessie Smith. Oh, was, I missed well, that, that one. Was I really that good. was great. So this is Carol King. So it's really fun. She was very uh, important in my um, youth. <laughs> yes, my musical development as well. You know, amazing. Well, she's won a lot of Grammys. Yeah, a lot uh, of Grammys. As George reminded me, the Gershwin Award. She mm -hmm. won the Gershwin Award. Yeah. Yeah. Popular song. Amazing. Yeah. How does it feel to play someone so famous? I guess you've done it eleven times. Yeah, but... they're all famous. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times they aren't with us. You right. know, you know, but yeah. she is. She's not touring anymore, but she's still mm -hmm. very active mm -hmm. in yeah. all the things. So, yeah, so that's what I'm work, working on as well as, um, you know, George and I um, play music together. And so we're always working on mm -hmm. our c upcoming gigs. And, you know, I'm learning, I've been learning a new style of music for the last um, several years. And yes. George introduced me to that. It's, it's gypsy jazz. Yes. So I'm excited to. Yeah. So She's, I've been playing that. I, I have to say, you know, um, it's really nice to be married to and uh, have a best friend that has a work ethic like she does because <laughs> I get to watch this in action. She's amazing. She Well, she is. Do not she, miss an appointment. Do not miss a rehearsal. <laughs> if you're not 10 minutes early, you're late. That's what she says to me. She trained me on being on time. If you're not 10 minutes early, Britt, you are late. You're, t you're late. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. okay. But her work ethic when she digs into a project yeah. is pretty amazing. She's amazing. I mean, we all have that, you know, there's something about work that is, um, it's a joy. It's a joyful thing when we're doing it, and we're doing it well. Mm -hmm. But to watch her work is... And he has a stronger work ethic than me, believe me. Hmm. He does. So for him to say, it's not like he's laying around on the right. couch going, wow, I could watch you work all day. Yes, I you understand know, your, your recent love of <clears throat> photography that you spend about 20 out of 24 hours a day working on that. So we'll get to that at the later okay. part in the show. But. So you're both a little mutual admiration society. That sounds like a marriage in heaven to me. That sounds just, <laughs> I mean, how amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that with the audience. Yeah. You're very inspiring that way. Yeah, thanks for yeah. recognizing that, too. Absolutely. I'm actually looking forward to talking about that. So Okay, well, let's talk about it. Okay, let's, let's just go for it. <laughs> yeah, let's, <laughs> we don't have to warm up that. to that, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> well, um, I happen to know, um, I was actually... Uh, pretty involved in your life at the time you met George mm -hmm. and happened to know that you met at a photo op for jazz musicians. Oh, yes. And you both had lived within blocks of each other for decades. And we did. And 
didn't know each other. You both were famous in your own right in the Valley uh, as performers and didn't know each other. And you showed up at this photo op. Why don't, instead of me sitting here and, and talking about it for 10 minutes, which I could, yeah. um, why don't you tell <laughs> okay. me a little bit? Yeah, that was gone with the wind. It was uh, attraction <laughs> right at the beginning. And, uh, but there's a very can... important element to that story that I do want to talk about. Oh, and, a couple elements. Well, one of them is, well, uh, it, how we met, it was a, a, photo, show, a photo shoot, I <laughs> can't talk today, it's okay. at Pascal Winery. Right. in talent and uh yes you were going to bring the was... photo did anyone bring the photo i remember oh was i going to bring yeah, the photo yeah you were, oh, you were like Rip, there's the guy I... you... oh yes, did i you point him out to you okay to well uh we were part of a group uh over a five year period there was a jazz appreciation club very informal that met at Pascal Winery once a month okay. and they would have local jazz uh musicians um, come and you know uh, give a concert uh, on their specialty and then talk about their mus the music and the composers and that sort of thing which is my very favorite kind of concert to do so I had worked at Pascal winery with Dal Carver and Jeff Atticott mm -hmm. my jazz trio guys and um, and George had been there with his group back porch swing at one point over this five-year period so the woman who organized that, uh, Jana Colesbun, wanted to have a big photo on, uh, at Pascal Winery to, to uh, commemorate five years of this jazz club. And uh, anybody who had played there under that uh, umbrella uh, was invited. So there were about 55, I think, of it us. It was a long was a line of people. It was a bunch of people, and we 60, all yeah. went there. And that's where we met. So I, I had never heard Back Porch Swing play, although I knew they played gypsy jazz. Okay. And I really liked that kind of music. So I was standing there and George came up to me. And what did you say? Oh, that's good. I, I get the interlude in this story. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the way it always this is. is so this is the way, now. you know, we've told this story before. And, um, and so I need to preface it with saying that, um, of course I knew who she was. Did I ever formally meet her? No, I didn't, because I, I watched all of her hairdo changes. She did <laughs> commercials for 23 years, right, right. Uh, car commercials. In fact, a lot of people think she owned the car company. Yeah, right. wouldn't that have been nice? Um, you know, and so I watched her hairstyles change, watched mm -hmm. her on um, a lot of things she did on the air. But we'd never actually formally met, shook hands. And so she was walking across the room because we were waiting to do this shoot. And um, it was outside, wasn't it? it was well, it was outside, but we the were the inside. We were waiting glass. inside. Everybody was drinking wine, okay. and, you know, waiting. Yeah. So. Okay. So she walked by, and I just it, she was only a few feet away, and I I just extended a, a greeting to her, and so we formally met. And um, what did you say about? You said something about my band. Well, he, 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 he introduced himself, and, I, and he, said, uh, he said, hi, George Rubeloff, Back Porch Swing. And I looked at him and went, oh, I love that band. <laughs> and he looked at me, hmm. And I know he was thinking, oh, I've never seen her on a gig that I've been at. Mm -hmm. Where's she heard my band? And as soon as I said that, I thought, eh, it's not, that's the first lie. No, <laughs> no, I can't do that. And, I, and what I really meant to say was, I love the music that your band plays, but that's not how it came out. And he okay. looked at me and I, oh, I thought, okay. So I tried to recover and save it as best I could. I'll just put but, a quick wrap on my story. And that is that, you know, I've told the story because it's exactly the way <laughs> I was feeling. Mm -hmm. and, when we met and we were exchanging um, just, you know, just pleasantries. pleasantries. Pleasantries, right. That's the word that came to mind yeah, here, right. too. I was trying to search <laughs> okay. for that. We'll but finish you. Two women here. Yeah, we'll we'll finish you. Thank you. For you. My wife is my editor, too. I just wanted you to know. Um, you know, it was one of those things where when you're meeting somebody and then all of a sudden everything in the room just goes black and white or goes kind of quiet. Did you because, faint? Well, no, I didn't. But <laughs> what was happening was it was the only thing that was happening in that room was mm -hmm. meeting her. Mm -hmm. Everything else was like just in the blocked movies. out. So there was a, it, I don't know if it was gone with a wind, but it was 
kind of felt like that. <laughs> <laughs> so we had, we did have a, a, an, attra an immediate, you know, I remember thinking, well, he was really nice. We didn't really actually go out for coffee for several weeks. But um, after that, we did, and, and we maintained a friendship for about three months before becoming romantically involved, mm -hmm. which I think is um, yeah. really important. <laughs> yeah. key. A, it, it's key in a relationship, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I've had, you know, numerous false starts in my life. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that. <laughs> and <laughs> well, they so do now. It, well, they do now. <laughs> well, it was important for me. To just take some time and get to know who is this person, mm -hmm. you know? Can he maintain his appearance of genuine article mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. several months, you know? Because most people, guys, women too, they can do it for a month or so, but then mm -hmm. the real person starts to relax and come up. So my advice is on relationships, get to know the person first. Dr. Gale, That's you heard right. it here first. You heard it here first, and then, if you want to proceed, then... Um, take it a step further and, you know, make some commitments and that kind of thing. But get to know the person. Wow. Well, anyway. that's, that's very yeah. wise. I got to know him and I really... We had to work our way around the bases really slow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, like the lasting effect here is, is tribute that that works, obviously. And I actually remember um, the fact that there were some discussions that happened. And I think besides becoming a person's friend before introducing romance, as you mentioned, Gail. Um, the next component that made it so successful is the fact that you did discuss, let's discuss money, for let's instance. Let's discuss finances. Let's have a talk about a budget. You know, whereas yeah, most right. people you've known for six months and they're like, what? But most marriages mm -hmm. that end, they say money problems have a huge Part mm -hmm. in the it's really important of a marriage. So, I think well, I a lot of times that. we want to deny that, but it's right. true. It's really and true, yeah. and that was important. Um, and how so, solid you must feel to, to be able to talk about those things. This is this is how this and this and this yeah, go. Yeah, I yeah. mean, how fantastic! And then yeah. other conversations that came out of that about how we're going to live and your lifestyle. I think, George, I, I had made a little mental note to ask you a little bit about that before we move on to gypsy jazz. Okay. Um, and, and that had to do with your um, discussed lifestyle, kind of a vision map for success. When you oh, met Gail, yeah, how you approached that? Well, that's good. Well, you know, what we knew we wanted to do is we knew we wanted to um, carry out the artistic things that we like to do. Mm -hmm. And music, playing music was you know, really an important kind and of number always, one. It was yeah. number one. It was number yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's face it. Gil, don't beat around the bush, honey. It was number one. And it was interesting because um, when we finally did go to coffee, we sat down, we had a great conversation. We were on the uh, Calle and we were at, uh, what was the name of that restaurant? Oh, it right? was Greenleaf. Um, Greenleaf at the time. Greenleaf, and we were back. having iced tea, and it was like <laughs> 3 o'clock, so we met at 3 o'clock. <laughs> And we had a this nice great safe time. time, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, perfect. And she was five minutes early, too. <laughs> um, but we talked about, she talked about video production, mm -hmm. video work. I talked about photography. We both talked about music because we're already, passion. Knew, we already knew. And so we talked about these four passions of ours. And, um, and it's still like that today. And I think there isn't a day that goes by that I don't stop and think. I feel really fortunate. I feel really fortunate that, number one, that we met each other. I feel fortunate that we had these artistic things in common. And I feel fortunate that I had an opportunity to acquire these skills. These skills, playing music, you know, doing photography and that, that sort of thing. So I, I just, I'm thankful every day that mm. we have that. That's beautiful. I so think it's really important to, to connect with someone that you have a lot in common with. You know, we have music and, you know, we both have our creative, you know, I was in video all my life, so I had that and he's been, you know, was a very much into photography when we met and of course now he's taken it, you know, to the next level and beyond. But it's important, you know, we're on the same page politically, uh, m morally, um, our values are very similar. We're similar age. I think that's really nice myself. <laughs> For some reason, I had always, you know, older men, but um, 
George and I are the same age, and we have the same cultural references. You right, know, right. it's it's pretty great. Yeah, I should write a book on what you should. You know, this is a that. great <laughs> idea. Hey, you know, now, we're going to have to have another show. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> Just so I'm mad, right? I, I wanted to uh, I wanted to um, interject something, and that is that, you know, she talked about that we we're we're together on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You know, we we sometimes have slightly different ideas about maybe how to approach something. Um, the one thing that we Another th another element of our lives that we're together on is the honeydew list. There's this honeydew list around the house. <laughs> we are. But, well, no. What, what the content of the honeydew list we're together on, and <laughs> but it's when these things get done is w where we differ sometimes. Well, uh, I always say, can I? I always say, I say, well, no, you. We have this little standing running joke where he goes, honey, if it's on the list, it will get done. There's no need to nag me every six months. <laughs> <laughs> what, that's true. Yeah, isn't there a time limit to the list? Maybe each list should be three it months. It should, oh, yeah, that's goodness. right. Well, there's well, always going to be carryover. That honeydew list is so long, Brett. And it's just... I've actually seen a room that you've remodeled. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. So let's go ahead and ask um, our director to go ahead and cut to Gail's contact information since we're going to segue now into the world's greatest romance or from the world's greatest romance <laughs> into your passion for music and right. thank you so much for sharing your passion for each other it really does kind of ooze out of you and I love being around you guys oh, because you just bring it. light and joy to people that you're around thanks and, Brad. Uh, yeah very sweet of you yeah. to say that I haven't cried for a couple shows now so <laughs> Um, well, see you. if I can hold it back here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're doing good. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing pretty good. So, um, and in just a moment, I would like to also show um, George's vintage jazz card. So, whenever that's convenient in the control room, there, if you could display that um, as we segue into gypsy jazz here. So, this is George Rubeloff's vintage jazz contact information. As a musician and photographer, we'll show your contact information for <laughs> photography at the end of the show. Okay. So <clears throat> at this time, I'm going to take a bit of a back seat um, to have you discuss Gypsy Jazz, which I just can't help myself. It sounds so fun to say 80 times in a row, Gypsy Jazz, Gypsy Jazz, Gypsy Jazz. <laughs> but <laughs> the, um, the guitar virtuoso that started Gypsy Jazz in the 20s Django Reinhardt. I guess there was an amazing story there with a fire and a musician that had fingers. And I'll, I'll let you go ahead with that, George. Yeah, I'll we talk have... a little bit about that. Well, yeah. you know, he, uh, J uh, Django Reinhardt, and by the way, that's spelled D J, and a lot of people oh. uh, don't. It's not A -N -G -O. J oh. or G, or it's D J A N G O. Yes, and we are going to go to his first clip of Belleville Rendezvous. Actually, that's not too. his song, yeah. but it's, oh, it's, he, it's he a didn't song. write it. It's a, but it's a gypsy jazz style. It but is he, a gypsy jazz. Yeah, style. he wrote the other one that we okay. have for you. All right, we are um, definitely going to have to have a second show. They just told me there's nine minutes left. Can you believe that? I know, wow, it goes so fast. Yeah. I know, it goes All so right. fast. Well, you well, promised. Uh, well, then I'll, I'll uh, summarize. Then Django Reinhardt was a bona fide gypsy from Europe. And he, um, he lived in the gypsy camps. And probably a standard um, lifestyle for the gypsy men were to learn from their uncles how to play an instrument. Could be a violin, could be a guitar, could be banjo. Um, accordion. Accordion, exactly, yeah. Come Accordions like were it. really important in that kind of music. And so he was raised in that environment playing gypsy jazz. And this is the, you know, we're talking about the uh, the little trailers that used to, mm -hmm. or the wagons. You know, this is this goes way back to the 20s. Um, and so uh, he, he was uh, married really young as a teenager. And one night, I think his wife, um, the, wi the wives in the gypsy camps were always the uh, entrepreneurs. And they went out <laughs> and sold things and did the things that they did. And she had these acrylic flowers that she used to sell. And one night in their, um, in their wagon, those acrylic flowers caught fire. Did he they was, have acrylics in the 20s? Well, that's... Wasn't it silk that's, or paper you know, or something? 
Don't correct me. Acrylic the might, of the story. Be, yeah. might oh, be. Oh, okay. A, <laughs> it, it might Whatever be a modern were, thing, but it, somehow I read they caught that fire. it was. Yeah, they caught fire. Maybe it was fire. cellulose or yeah. you know what? <laughs> cellulose. Yeah, yeah. Cellulose, that'll yeah. go up. Paper. <laughs> but anyway, it caught anyway, fire. The whole thing caught fire, and he was seriously injured in his leg and and also in his hand, and so. He was in the hospital for quite a while. They wanted to remove his leg, but his, his family said no. And um, somebody brought him, uh, I think it was a, a guitar, I think a guitar while he was in the hospital. And you know, his fingers had been damaged so that what he ended up with was he had these two fingers. This one had just pretty much um, fused together and he had kind of a little stub there. So. Um, you know, he's done a lot with just two fingers. Wow. But anyway, he, um, he had this inkling to fuse um, American jazz and gypsy jazz, and that's what he did to create this music. Amazing. And so um, the longer the story is that um, he formed a band and became really popular. And okay. the popularity that they had was in Europe was pretty much like a lot of these, uh, like, People looked at the Beatles as being really novel. Mm. Well, the Hot Club of France, that the was quintet, the, name of the band, yeah, the band was um, amazingly popular. Okay. They played in Paris tea rooms a lot, but they didn't drink tea in these tea rooms. Right. Yeah. I, it was like, all right. you know. <laughs> so that music just caught kind of hold, and it has a real infectious rhythm to it. Wonderful. And it's jazz, and it's very accessible for okay. people. I think. Awesome. Well, we probably just have time to play Bellevue Rendezvous. Belleville okay. Rendezvous. It's a clip of, uh, it's very uh, hot uh, gypsy jazz style. Okay, wonderful. Well, that's probably what we have time for today, and right. the next one we'll yeah. share on the next one. Will we hear this? <laughs> okay. All right, whenever you're ready, we will go to Belleville Rendezvous. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> life in Timbuktu A cheek so tight my lips are turning blue I want to be wicked, utterly wicked, wicked like triplets from Belleville Don't want to wind my days in Acapulco Stiff as a board dancing tango tango I'd love to be twisted Utterly twisted, twisted like driplet from Belleville. Come on, girls, swinging Belleville rendezvous, marathon dancing doop de doo, vaudou can can ballet taboo, a Belleville swinging rendezvous. Guitar and a guru. I prefer to be, much prefer to be, swinging with the triplets from Belleville. Allez la fille, swinging Belleville rendezvous. Marathon dancing, doop de doo. Vaudou can can ballet taboo. 
Belleville swinging rendezvous. Swinging Belleville rendezvous. Marathon dancing, do do do. Vardu can can valley taboo. Ah, Belleville swinging rendezvous. Makes you want to sing. <laughs> Makes you want to dance. <laughs> Makes you want to definitely <laughs> dance. That was great, Gail. Mm -hmm, thank that you. That was great. I think I first heard you on the melodeon. One of those instruments that I was thinking was a harpsichord, but mm -hmm. I don't know my instruments that well. I heard you on the Melodeon um, at Standing Stone on the Patio one summer. You two were together. It must mm. have been the oh yeah I when you remember. had your trio. It was yeah. lovely. Well, that's a quartet on that uh, recording. Okay. Uh, we have a guitarist and a bass player on that, okay. in addition to George and I. But we, okay. we play um, around town, um, a little bit around town. We play some wineries. We play um, at first Fridays at uh, the hotel downtown, Ashland Ashen Springs, Springs Hotel, mm -hmm. uh, in the afternoon on a first Friday. And uh, we play largely um, weddings and private uh, fundraisers and private parties mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. We don't really play around town too much, but I do play with my trio at the Wild Goose uh, once every couple months. Okay. We just keep our chops up, Wonderful. you know? Yeah. Well, I know that the annual chocolate festival um, which, of course, I never can miss. <laughs> Chocolate is essential to life. Oh, you know, you're playing it is food groups. wonderful. Yes. Yes. Ashland, the Oregon Chocolate Festival in yeah. Ashland is primo. It's and in And you're March. playing that in March, correct? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's at the Ashland Springs Hotel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fantastic. Each March is an annual thing, yeah. Well, before we wrap up, let's ask our director to show the contact information of your photography business, George, because we'll have another show and we can talk about your passion yeah. for photography. Oh, okay. yeah. Very passionate. There we are, George mm -hmm. Rubeloff, photography, and your website's oh, right there. And that looks familiar. We've seen yeah. some of your work, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. thank you. It's amazing. Go to his website, it's really loaded with wonderful, yeah. it's art, really. I like shooting yeah. people. Yeah. yeah. People are interesting. Uh, could take that a, a different way, but, yeah, but we're not but going we're to. Not going no. to. No. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been a pleasure. Thank you guys so oh, very thank much. You. I thanks love for having us. Your support of one another thanks is just being. beautiful. And yeah. thanks for your support of me as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks and the show, interested. you know, you've been on this show for quite a while now, eight years, I think. We something, said, like something like that. Something like that. So, way to go. You're yeah. obviously passionate about that. Thank you. So congratulations. Thank you. I have wonderful folks to talk to. I have great guests. Thank Very you. Very smooth so much. interviewer. Uh, <laughs> all right, you guys. Well, I look forward to the next one. Okay. okay. And, um, Thanks. Thank you so much for joining us today on Passion. I'm your host, Britt Ivy. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye bye.